Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Rob from a Gay Guy Plays, and unfortunately, I am still sick. So rather than our regularly scheduled program, I figured I would do a little bit of a vlog, so something a little less formal and a lot more unscripted. Now unfortunately the project that I was working on a little bit earlier this week didn't quite pan out, the scripting didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to, and I figured that it could probably wait. So I didn't want to just skip out and leave you guys with absolutely nothing this week, so I figured that I would go ahead and cover some of the topics that they went through on DevStream 39. If you guys have not caught that, I will leave a link in the description box down below. There's tons and tons and tons of stuff that I will not be able to cover in this little portion right here. So let's start off real quick with Arcwing. Now, we've all seen what Arcwing looks like, we've seen the things that it can do, and it looks amazing. They went through and showed us a few new things with another Arcwing, so there are going to be two Arcwings on launch, one that seems a little bit more defensive, and one that seems a little bit more offensive. One thing to note is that all Arcwings and all Arcwing weapons will have new mods, so they are going to be a separate mod set than what we have now, so I would suggest farming up some fusion cores or grabbing some fusion fodder. Now if you guys are curious however and did watch the dev stream, I'm kind of getting a feel for the more defensive one of the two. I felt like its ability set was just a little bit better and maybe a little bit more weapon focused as opposed to the offensive one which seemed to be a little bit more ability focused. But unfortunately it is a moot point until all of that stuff comes out and we see how they play in game. So moving on, there are some really really interesting things that are coming up with the ability mod changes. Now ability mods are going to be removed from the game completely. Instead, we're going to have our own separate ability panel and we're going to gain those abilities as we level up our Warframes. Now, they're saying that you'll be able to access the ultimate at about rank 15, which makes me think that we'll probably have ability 1 at rank 0, ability 2 at rank 5, ability 3 at rank 10, and ability 4 at rank 15. But in all honesty, that is just speculation. Now, due to the fact that we are going to have access to all of our abilities, they are going to be removing two of our mod slots. Now, for those of us who have spent a lot of time and energy formatting our Warframes, this is a little bit of a concern for us as we don't know which slots are going to be removed. Now, they are saying that the scratch polarities are going to be completely gone and unassigned any polarities whatsoever, which is nice and handy. Unfortunately, it seems like the only solution that they currently have for us is if we have repolarized one of those scratch slots and we end up losing them, they will refund us a form up. However, they will not refund us the time it took to rank back up from it. At this point, we'll see what happens because we don't have all of the details quite yet. Now another cool thing that they said that they're going to be releasing with update 15 is they're going to have some mod sets that are specific to certain types of weapons, such as beam weapons, and I'm assuming there's going to be a whole slew of them, so yes, start farming those cores and start farming those cores now. Now, the next mind-blowing thing that is also launching with Update 15, and I'm telling you, come on, the list just keeps going and going and going, but I'm really, really excited for this one, and this is Syndicates. So, Syndicates are the faction system that they've been talking about for a while, where you'll build faction with certain Syndicates as long as you're wearing their sigils. Now, there are six Syndicates in all, and they all seem to have a tiered system as to their rewards. At the first rank, you'll be able to pick up a unique Syndicate Spectre, which ranges from anything from a Grenier Scorpion, to a Corpus Moa, to a Corrupted Drone. So, not super exciting, but yeah, it's tier 1. Tier 2 really isn't all that exciting either, as you'll get Team Restores, so Energy Restores, Shield Restores, you'll have access to that. Tier 3 is where it gets kind of interesting. So, certain factions will have access to Tower 4 keys, some will have access to rare fusion cores, and others will be able to get you form a blueprint, which is pretty damn awesome. Now at tier 4 and 5, that's where things start getting really deep. Each syndicate is going to have unique weapon augments available for different kinds of weapons. So certain syndicates might offer amazing mods for some of your favorite weapons, so definitely keep an eye out on that when you're starting to look at your syndicates. At the maximum rank, you'll be able to pick up unique Warframe ability augment mods, which is absolutely mind-blowing. I'm telling you right now, I mean, I have no clue what they're going to be, but because of the fact that they're adding these in, we may see a completely new meta for Warframe. I mean, not until we see these augments will we really truly know the power of these things, but hey, you never know, it could be absolutely amazing. 
Now, for the six syndicates that they're launching, there's the Steel Meridian, which are a bunch of guerrilla warriors and the protectors of the few remaining colonies. Seems legit, but they are led by a Grenier deserter, so you know how that goes. Next are the Arbiters of Hexus, which seem to want to elevate Tenno into a higher status. It's a little bit nebulous as to what exactly they mean by that, but what it seems to be saying is we're not just warriors, we could totally be more than that. Next is Cephalon Suda, a curious AI with a thirst for knowledge. Now if he's half as funny as Ortis, oh, me and him are going to be really good friends. Or her, because you never know, it's kind of a floating box, whatever. Next is the Parent Sequence, a group of merchants who want to restore order via prosperity and direction. I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work. It's like, hey, let's give money to everybody and everybody should be happy. I guess? Right? I don't know. After that is the Red Veil, and let me tell you, we saved these guys, and now I'm not so sure. They seem kind of like they might be psycho because they want to quote unquote heal the system by fucking killing everything. I mean, shit. Look what we did. Look what we did. And last is New Loka, who believe that repopulating Earth and purifying humanity is the only solution to our current problem. Kinda sounds a little bit like the KKK, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Now if you guys couldn't already tell, I'm probably gonna be doing some research on this and figuring out which syndicates offer what mods because, you know, I fucking love my mods and shit. However, if mods and all of that were not involved, which syndicate do you think I would join? And more importantly, let me know which syndicate you're planning on joining off the bat so that we can all argue and hate each other as much as we did during the Gradivus Dilemma. Isn't it great? Now the last thing I definitely wanted to cover, which I thought was kind of interesting and wackadoo, was the new Warframe. Now the new Warframe in the Design Council was slated to be something considered to be like a Void Spectre Wizard kind of thing. And they revealed on the dev stream, it's gonna have a hat, and it's gonna tip its hat, kinda like a magician tips his top hat. So I think it's gonna be really interesting, I mean, he's got a whole slew of really cool phase abilities that will pull allies in and out of this weird phase state, and it all sounds kind of weird and funky and cool, but I'll be honest, the thing that most interests me is a Warframe with a hat? I mean, I gotta, I gotta see how this works out. So all in all, I'm super excited about Update 15. I hope the guys at DE are getting rest at some point because I really don't think that I've seen them release such a large amount of content all at once. I mean, Melee 2.0 and all of those combos probably ate up a whole lot of their time, but to be honest, this update seems to be hitting every department and hitting every department pretty damn hard. So I can't wait to see how it goes, I'm glad that they got an extra week to do it. But yeah, that's pretty much it, so I'm gonna end it right here because my sinuses are burning and every time I speak my nose feels like it's gonna explode off of my face. And let's face it, exploding on and exploding off of the face, two very different things, the former being much more tolerable than the latter. Anyway, you guys have a great night, so sorry I wasn't able to get something more formal out to you, and I will chat with you guys soon. Bye!